Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is 8.30, and you are looking live at the headquarters of the Kaima Real Estate Group. I'm back inside this week. Last week, you saw I was outside because it was, uh, it was warm out. It was really nice out. Today, I don't know what the temperature is outside, but I'm willing fall to be here today. Come on, bring it. Bring me some fall weather. Why? Because donkey tastes even better on a fall day. It's my homage to my New England roots, right? So, uh, yeah, so welcome, welcome. I'm excited. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so, yeah, I'm ready for fall. I know many of you are ready for summer and 110 degree weather, and you're going to be posting pictures of your, you know, 106 degrees on your dashboard of your car and yada, yada, yada. I love fishing. I love boats. I love all the things that have to do with summer as long as summer doesn't get above 85 degrees. <laughs> Anyhow, listen, it is uh, it is Friday. It is the middle of June. We're almost at the halfway point of the year. Um, last night, uh, my son Camden, who's really into the NBA, watched the NBA draft with me last night. And I'm sorry, it didn't do anything for me. Uh, I don't care about it. I, I, I watched it because Camden watched it, and that's always fun to spend time with my son. Um, but tell me if the NFL just doesn't get it, right? The NFL figures this thing out, right? Everything the NFL does is like like an event, right? The games each week, it's an event. The draft is an event. Um, the free agent period is an event. Everything they do is an event. They figure they have figured out the secret sauce. All the other leagues are trying to figure it out. Not quite the same. Not quite the same panache. Anyhow, um, yesterday, so I belong to this little private text group with some friends of mine. Uh, we call it the coaches, and there's a bunch of guys I used to coach with that are all part of this group. Um, that, that we started. This is back from my old rec league days uh, with Cole. So this this goes back, you know, 15 years now. And yesterday, one of them showed uh, one of the baseball bats that they used many years ago was used yesterday to kill a black snake on the golf course. And uh, man, I, I don't know about you, but snakes are the one thing I don't do snakes. I can do insects, I can do all the other, but I don't do snakes. Now, I know there's a big, big push of people that say, you know, don't kill, you know, don't kill snakes. Or I'm not here to get PETA involved. I'm just telling you, if you're a snake and you're on my property, you're not going to be there long, right? Um, but tell me for you, like, is there any, like, it, do you do snakes? Like, what is it that you just refuse? Is it spiders? Like, what is it that you just refuse? Yeah, you know, is is it decaf coffee? I mean, what scares you the most, right? Um, so anyway, yeah, so I saw that picture of the snakes last night. Um, from Nelson. And then I got to think about my buddy, David Colgan. And so many of you know David Colgan. Um, you want to talk about an odd fellow. So David was on a jog in the woods. When I say a jog, I mean like a, I don't know, 15 mile jog in the woods just a couple weeks ago. And he stops because he sees a big old snake and he picks it up and takes a picture of a snake wrapped around his arm and he's holding it by the head. And, and he shared that picture again last night with us in this conversation. He's part of this coaches group. And uh, I just think to myself, like, who are you? What, what kind of people do that? And then I see, like, field trips, and you see these, like, elementary school kids with, like, snakes wrapped around their necks and dressed across their, or draped across their arms, and I'm thinking to myself, there is no way not doing it. Nope, forget about it. Not involved with snakes. Um, anyhow, so that one thing I'm going to um, mention later, I'm going to ask for your advice on, so stay tuned for that. But I uh, did want to talk a little bit about this morning at 10 a.m. about some really cool breaking news in Wake Forest. So there is a groundbreaking today. Most of you know about the food hall that is coming. If you go underneath the bridge in Wake Forest, the old building on the left-hand side, like don't, don't make a right like you're going up white. You just keep going straight after you go underneath the bridge in Wake Forest. On the left-hand side, you see all the fencing around. There's going to be a really, really cool food hall going in there. And construction is underway. And we're going to talk more about that later um, in a future episode here. However, this morning, there's a groundbreaking for something new that's coming to Wake Forest, right? In other food hall style uh, establishment, we've been invited to this groundbreaking. So I'm excited to learn more about it today and I'll share more with you tomorrow. But if you go down to where the loading dock is and you're facing the loading dock, to the right, there's a strip of land. And to the right of that is a, just an old uh, abandoned building, an old warehouse. So my friend, I, I believe my buddy, um, my buddy Tim went ahead and, and, and sold that. Um, anyhow, nonetheless, I digress. We once had a really, really cool Oktoberfest inside that building, uh, but that, that that's 15 years ago at this point, maybe, maybe 14 years ago, I don't remember. But that's also going to be some sort of a food hall. How cool is that? 
right? So we're going to have a food hall at one end of the downtown area of Wake Forest. We're going to have some sort of a food hall or some kind of an establishment at the other end. Again, I'm going to the groundbreaking this morning. I've uh, been invited to the after party, so we will get the information and we'll share that with you next week. But really, really cool things happening in downtown Wake Forest, which is already a really cool place to go hang out, right? So stay tuned for that. I'm going to give you something that you can take with you. This is a value add. This is why you come here each week. Um, by the way, for those of you that are just tuning in, um, I am willing fall to get here, right? My coffee tastes better in the fall. I am willing it to get here with my scarf and my hat. And my, of course, it's my Carolina hat. Uh, go Heels. Uh, but anyhow, so I am I'm excited. But I'm going to give you a value add right now. I'm going to break down some of the best uh, Mexican restaurants and some of the Mexican restaurants that people talk about. I'm not going to go over all of them, but just a few of these on the north side in particular. So I saw somebody post the other day about a place called, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this correctly, it's in North Raleigh. If you've eaten there, share it with us. We need to get there if it's good. A place called Carajillos? Carrillos? It's C-A-R-A-J-I-L-L-O-S. Carrillos. Uh, hey, what's up, coach? Um, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I don't want winter. I just want fall. Um, Anyhow, so uh, if you've been to this restaurant in North Raleigh, share that with me. But I want to share with you, and I'm going to finish with the best Mexican restaurant. So, of course, your taste buds are all different. I get that. Jennifer and I, we love strip mall Mexican. Just your basic, down and dirty, old school Mexican restaurant, right? But we have certain things that we have to have there that are good, right? So the feed is actually have to have flavor, right? You have to have alcohol in your drinks, right? It, those kinds of things are important. So... Um, Cafe Capistrano in North Raleigh off Durant Road, I understand, is under new ownership. I've heard great things. It used to be okay. I've heard great things about the new owners, so we're going to put that on the short list. Toros in Franklinton. So I've heard a lot of people talk about Toros. We've been to Toros a couple of times. It's okay. It's not bad. None of the places I'm talking about are bad. It's a limited menu. It's it's okay, right? It's all right. It's a cool place to go if you're going for drinks, though. Um, El Salsa, new one. This one I bet you don't know about. Down there off of Mitchell Mill Road, Forest Square Road, that area. It's in a gas station, um, like sub, like a, like a, uh, what do you call it? Shopping center. It doesn't look like much. But the food's actually pretty darn good. Hidden little secret there. So um, El Salsa, go go take a look. Um, if you are a North Raleigh person, they used to have, and I think it moved downtown now. Dos Taquitos. If you've never been to Dos Taquitos, get the seat, get the table side. Um, guac and salsa uh, making it's it's phenomenal but it's just it's more of an event to go there and staying in that theme another place that a lot of people love they love gonzas i love going to gonzas and sitting on the patio right it's a good time and the food's pretty good my kids struggle a little bit finding things they like uh, it's a little bit of a limited menu but the food is delicious and the atmosphere is awesome especially in the fall when you can sit out on the patio right so um the Fiesta Mexicana, which is a chain, there's a bunch of them around. The one in Wakefield, that used to be our jam. That's where we used to go hang out. The problem with Fiesta Mexicana, in my opinion, the food's great. Um, they stopped putting alcohol in their drinks. Like the drinks, you can tell, were noticeably weaker over time. Still put it on my short list. Great place to go grab some dinner. But if you're going to, to mix in some drinks with it, you might want to just make sure that you ask for a full shot of alcohol in your drink. Um and then finally, I'm going to bring you back to what I think is the best Mexican restaurant in the northern hemisphere of Wake County, and that is Don Julio's. Hidden little gem in the Lowe's Food Shopping Center uh, in Wake Forest, but Don Julio's kind of gets it. I've never been in there when it wasn't full at dinner. Never been in there when they, the uh, service wasn't fantastic. The food's always good. The alcohol flows for sure. So my number one overall now place to go for Mexican food, in my opinion, is Don Julio's in Wake Forest. Um so shout out to my, my friends over there. Taco Tuesday is always a treat there, by the way. Um, so the, last night, we took one of my family members and moved her over to YouTube TV. Um, she's having some TV issues with her satellite and what have you. So it was time to go ahead and move her over. All of you know that I will not watch the Raiders anywhere but at home, right, in the fall. Well, you also may know that the only place to catch the NFL this fall will be on youtube tv right that's the only place to catch where well, you can catch all the games right because that's where the nfl sunday ticket is moved to so inevitably we're moving to youtube tv i asked a question here about youtube tv i don't know a few weeks ago and one guy a lot of people gave great advice and offered to help one guy in particular called me out of the blue and was like dude here's what you need to do so he gave me a bunch of advice so we're going to make that move but we moved her over last night 
what I learned was that the NFL Sunday tickets on sale right now, but will not be for much longer. So we're probably going to make the move this weekend. Um, if you are a YouTube TV user and you use Roku with it, a Roku box, can you hit me up? I'd love to ask you a few more questions about that. Um, but yeah, if, if that's something you do, let me know because I have some questions there. Um, then the other thing we're thinking about, and I mentioned this to you before as well, um, we are probably leaving Verizon and we're probably going to one of the other, I've been with Verizon forever, but I just can't get over the prices and so many of the people don't use Verizon and I talk to them on their phones and I can hear them clearly and they sound great. So we are thinking about making the move out of Verizon. It's just so stinking expensive compared to everybody else and I, and I can't understand why. So we're going to make the move. If you know where we should move to, let me know. Right now, T-Mobile is in the lead. That, that's probably where we're going. Um, a good friend of mine. Matter of fact, Trey, your neighbor, turned me on to a guy that he knows for T-Mobile. So that's who I'm going to be speaking to here in the next few days about making that change. Anyhow, no matter, uh, no matter your opinion, please go ahead and share those with me. Let me know. And that brings me to this. Are you an iPhone user? Because we're going to get a chance to switch phones. Do I go to Android for the first time ever? Do we stay with the iPhone? Which direction do we go? What direction do you go? I know, listen, so many of the apps are released to iPhone first, and that's attractive to me. I hear some good things about Androids, but man, I just I just don't know that I can make a Verizon switch and an iPhone switch at the same time, but I'm curious to know what you think. Hey, Michelle, good morning to you. Yeah, you like Toros. Okay, so I enjoy Toros. It's a fun place. To me, it's more fun to go hang out there, but I don't go for like, I don't think the food is like blow you away kind of food. But it's certainly a fun place to go hang out, and that back patio is awesome, no doubt about it, no doubt about it. All right, so let's talk about um, let's talk about the market real quick, and then I want to share something with you. Breaking news in Wake Forest and North Raleigh that's going to impact you and and your real estate. So let's talk about the market real quick. The market's stable. We have nothing to sell. There's a lot of real estate agents use the word inventory, and we've used the word inventory in the past. To so many of you, inventory may not mean anything. What inventory is, is the number of homes we have to sell in the market right now. So the number of homes we have to sell right now is almost the same as we had a year ago. We got a few more than we did a year ago. And we're the highest we've been since February by 200 homes, right? It, right now, there just isn't a lot to sell. Uh, that being said, a lot of builders don't put their homes in the MLS, so there is some hidden inventory. But there's always hidden inventory from builders. So right now, I would just tell you, the market is stable. We're watching interest rates. We've talked about this a million times. If you're a first or second time home buyer, right? If you're a first or second time home buyer and you are thinking about getting in the market, do not wait for the rates to drop. If you can afford to buy a house now, get it now and refinance. Buy at today's prices and refinance into tomorrow's rates. Why? Because when the rates drop, investor money is going to come down. We're going to have higher uh, prices and higher deposit money. So if that's important to you, find a real estate broker that you trust. If you don't have one, call us. If you're in someplace other than Wake County or the surrounding areas and you need somebody, call us. We've got a great network around the country. But find somebody you can trust and find a really good lender. Don't worry about the rate as much as you are about the whole package. And I'll get off my soapbox. I tell you this every single week. Um, so anyhow, oh, Michelle, little pro tip there. I like it. Okay, thank you for that. that that's good to know. Um, so I want to tell, I want to share with you things that are going to impact your um, your market, your, not your market, your house, right? Um, in North Raleigh off of Buffalo Road, uh, Taylor Morrison, a builder, has just announced that they're partnering with an investment firm out of Atlanta. We're going to do a little short video on this later as well, but they're partnering with um, a group there. There's a new public shopping center just outside of 540 that was just announced. So Publix is going to be the anchor of a new shopping center off of Buffalo Road, just north of 540. Most of you know that area to be very woodsy and kind of quiet. That's about the chain. Taylor Morrison's going to go directly across the street from there. They've got a piece of property where they're going to put in rental homes. A brand new builder, new construction builder, building rental homes only, right? Why would a new construction builder do this? Well, we started seeing this in the last two or three years. Certainly, we saw it at the beginning of the, the height of the market. The market was just going like this, right? People, uh, builders started building and holding onto that inventory, renting it. And then when the market leveled out, they started selling off some of that, those homes, right? We're expecting, like I said a few minutes ago, the market not to do what it did two years ago, but we are expecting it to increase. And if it does increase, it makes sense for a builder on that side of the equation to go ahead, build, hold on to the, uh, to the homes that they built, rent those out, take that rental income. And then when the prices rise, sell them then because they'll still own them. And they have the ability at their cost to go in 
fix the homes up and sell them. So again, you can be upset about all this kind of stuff as much as you want to, but this is a capitalist society and these builders are finding a way to capitalize, right? Um, but it's just is what it is. I saw somebody yesterday uh, talk about affordable housing in Wake Forest. I'm gonna tell you about the second big thing that's coming, but talk about affordable housing in Wake Forest and that the town of Wake Forest isn't getting behind it. Uh, unless we want to throw our tax dollars at dropping prices or building lower priced homes, right, which means more taxes for everybody, unless everybody's willing to do that, the landowner has the right to sell the land at the highest possible price a landowner can. The builder has the right, or the developer has the right to develop that land in a way that maximizes their investment as well. It is just simple economics. The people want to live where we live, and that's going to raise prices of land. It's going to raise prices of houses. You, you capitalize that with the fact that we have recently had a big increase in cost of goods, as you all know, right? Across the board, right? With gas being what it is, I posted something on gas the other day and people started making it a political statement. It wasn't political, it was an observation, but with gas being what it is, it costs more to move goods. It costs more to make goods, right? And so you add all that together and affordable housing becomes rural housing more than it becomes affordable. And fortunately, that's the case in the place that we are right now. But very difficult to pinpoint and, and point the finger at one group or another. Uh, at this point in time for affordable housing. It's certainly something we need more of. There's no questioning that. But how do we get there is really a problem because who's going to take the hit in the wallet to make that happen? Tough to have people do that. So anyway, the second place where they're going to be building some of these rentals, and this isn't Taylor Morris, this is another group. This was announced this week. The Town of Wake Forest, plan, or not planning board, uh, board of commissioners announced that they approved at the corner of Capitol Boulevard and Jenkins Road, and I know that road really well because I live down Jenkins Road. Uh, if you make, if you're going northbound and you make a left on Jenkins, um, everything that faces Capitol is going to become commercial. If you go down Jenkins, that Kudzu Hill that leads all the way down to the creek, all of that on the left-hand side is going to become cottage rental homes. The builders are going to do one, two, and three-bedroom cottages, and they're going to be rentals, permanent rentals. There, in this case, as I understand it. So. You're starting to see more and more of this. It's really hitting us locally right now. And I think it's an indication that people are going, or the builders and, and uh, investors are seeing the market getting ready to ramp back up as rates come down. The evidence is there, folks. Again, if you're looking to buy or sell right now, contact somebody that's in the know and that can help and guide you. It's not just about getting a house listed. It's not just about going and finding the perfect house. It's about maximizing the opportunity on both sides. Anyhow, I hope you have a great week. This has been a lot of fun. Well, for those of you that are in the building industry, that are in the commercial, or excuse me, the real estate industry of any kind, if you're a contractor, a plumber, an electrician, an attorney, yes, even you lenders, um, builders, you name it, uh, Brokers and Brews next Thursday night at uh, Strike and Barrel in Wake Forest from 5 to 7. Just a casual, come have a drink and meet some other people in the business. Hope you guys are doing great. I'll see you in a week.